What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday! Woo -woo. That's my Wednesday dance. That's my It's Wednesday dance. That's as good as it gets. Told y'all many times, my dancing skills, they stay right here. They don't get outside of this box or it gets wild and crazy. Not really. That, that's, as crazy. <laughs> that's as crazy as it gets. Somebody sent me a meme today, and it's a picture of a family sitting around a table, and one of the, the kids pipes up to the mom and said, now, mom, you know that we don't have to go to church to go to heaven, don't you? And she said, well, maybe you're right, but you also don't have to wear a parachute to jump out of an airplane, but either way, it sure, it sure helps, you know? And so we're glad that you are in church on a Wednesday night, that you take time out of your schedules, I know how busy you are, I know how hard you work, I know some of you drive um, from north and, and super south and east and west and fight traffic to get here on a midweek, and I just, I'm blown away every time that we walk in the doors of this church. You never cease to amaze me. You just show up hungry for the presence of God, ready for God to do something amazing in your life. Wow. I'm excited about the word of the Lord tonight, but before we dive into that, um, we have a very, very special, and I'm going to say guest, though I don't consider her a guest in the house tonight. Um, her and her husband and their entire family are dear friends of Cassidy and I, also of, of this house. In fact, you may not even know her, but you've prayed for her. Yeah, 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 but don't, don't ruin, I'm, don't take my punchline. If you'll remember, as we kicked off 21 days of prayer, I believe it was the first night, um, we came to you with a, just a, a dire need. Um, Daniela Phillips was in a horrific car accident in the Houston area, was life flighted and was, I mean, spent weeks and weeks in ICU and in the hospital She's in church tonight, y'all. I just where Daniela, where are will you stand just so everybody can say hello? Yeah, come on. What a miracle. Danielle, I told you before service, you don't know how many people have been praying for you who were praying for you and who continue to pray for you. Yeah, not just Christian Life Austin was praying, but you've had people all over the world praying for you. That's a pretty amazing thing. And I just, I wanna tell you that God's not done with you. God's, God's still got, he's still got a good work that he's doing in you. And I'm excited to see the end result of what God is doing in your life. We love you. We're so honored that you're here tonight. Thanks for making the trek down to Austin to be in church. So good to see your face and celebrate what God is doing. Come on, he's a miracle worker. That's why you don't call on somebody else's name when you're in need or when you're in trouble, because I don't have the power to meet those needs. But Jesus holds all power in his hands. And when you mention his name, wow, I'm fired up. I was, wish I was preaching on healing and miracles tonight. But I'm not. Tonight, I, I just, I don't know, and you're gonna laugh in a second when you figure out where I'm going. I don't know if I've just been struggling with this recently. And that's why the Lord put it on my heart to teach tonight. I don't specifically know that I have, and if I have, I just want you to know you are not them. Just from the beginning, you don't even know what I'm talking about. You will in just a second, but you need to know you are not them. Fair enough? Everybody understand? So we'll start with the question. Let me set the question up, actually. Maybe... Maybe you've encountered these types of people. Maybe it's people that you work with. Maybe, maybe you've just kind of been a bystander and you, you've seen something happen like 
at a drive through or at a register or um, at, uh, you know, somebody talking to a waiter or a waitress. Or again, it could have been a conversation that you've had with somebody and you just, you walked away from that situation just, just like this. And you even said these words. I think many of you have. People, people, people. You know, have you ever been there? Like, you see some, I don't know, I got to watch my language. No, I wasn't going to say like a bad word, but there's children in here. Like, it drives me nuts. People like at the grocery store are so rude. Like, I will... If I wouldn't show up in the paper tomorrow, local pastor body slams some person at H-E-B. People, people, people. There's a lot of difficult people in this world. You are not them. That's what I was just want you to understand. That's where I was going. There's all kinds of difficult people. There's people that think they know everything. Those are the worst. Not really. There's narcissistic people. Oh, no elbows. This is not the time for elbows. <laughs> There's the complainer. Anything ever good? No? Okay. Oh, what about the gossip? Bro, did you just make that up? There's no way that you just came up with that. There's no way that they just did what you're talking about. There's no way you saw that. You're lying. Just like to run your mouth. The whiner. Oh, this is a fun one. The passive aggressive person. Oh, yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all, y'all, you deal with some difficult people too. Oh, here's one that's kind of, this bugs me too. I was recently in kind of a, a social event where I didn't know a whole lot of people. And you, you can see it play out in these kind of social events, but there's those people that, they're just, the way that I call them are just the excluders. They don't bring you into their circle, right? And so like you're at a work event and you're standing there with your cup of coffee because you don't want to look goofy and you got a cup of coffee and you feel like more protected when you have a cup of coffee and you have your cell phone out and you're like trying to inch your way into the conversation hoping that somebody will open the circle. Am I the only one that struggles with this? And then, but then you have those people that are like, get out. <laughs> no. I'm glad I'm not the, again, you are not these people. But then, the one that we're going to dive into a little bit tonight, that just irks me, if I'm being honest, the criticizer. Mm, God bless you. The criticizer. They pick you apart piece by piece. And one of the most unfortunate things about the life that we live is that there will always be people with us that criticize you. There will always be the criticizer in your life, not just one person, but you will encounter these types of people. People will criticize you for what you do, and then they'll turn around and criticize you for what you don't do. You can't win here. There, there are people in this life that are going to just criticize you, and you see it play out all throughout the Bible. In the Old Testament, Moses was criticized by his own family members for the, the woman that he married. He married a Cushite woman who Aaron and Miriam couldn't stand. And if you've ever, if your family does not like your spouse, welcome to Moses' camp. I mean, this is, this is where he was. He was criticized for leading people out of slavery. The very people would say, um, 
can you please take us back to where we came from because that place has got to be much better than where we are now. Really? Like, have you really thought about that? Are you just frustrated with kind of what's going on? Right? Do you really, really want to go back there? The New Testament, the Apostle Paul, incredible world changer. I mean, we know this. He was criticized. They called him a hypocrite. They said he was not a good teacher. Jesus was criticized. The man without sin. And you go through life thinking that you're not going to be criticized? Jesus was criticized. Well, he hangs out with the wrong people. He eats with tax collectors. His friends are sinners. He heals people on the Sabbath. This is Jesus. <laughs> I hate to break it to you. This is very uplifting, what I'm about to tell you. You will be criticized all the time. As a follower of Jesus, you're going to be criticized. You're going to be criticized for your beliefs. You'll be criticized for the way that you lead your family. You'll be criticized because you're trying to live a life that lines up with the word of God instead of a life that lines up with culture and people will look at you and they'll say, what, uh, what, what, why would you? And they'll talk behind your back and they'll tell you, you don't know what you're doing. You will be criticized. And I think tonight it would be very apropos to, to figure out how to deal with it. Like how do we deal with criticism in a healthy in a, in a Christian manner, and, and when I'm counseling couples, a lot of times a, a question that I'll ask them is this, what is your, what's your praise to criticism ratio? Like how often are you praising your spouse versus, well, you didn't do it this way. You didn't do it this way. How, how often are you praising versus criticizing? And it's interesting because Praise and criticism tell us so much about what people believe. In fact, praise often reveals what people value most. People tend to praise what they value. I heard somebody say this, and this is, this is so true, that whatever you praise reveals what you value most, but whatever you criticize, watch, this is so true. Whatever you criticize reveals your deepest insecurities. Ooh. Maybe that's why Jesus said, hey, when you're looking at the, uh, the speck in somebody else's eye, why don't you take the log out of your own eye first? So why, why is it that people are so critical from time to time? What, what is the reasoning behind it? I think there's, there's so much that plays into it, but I think you can kind of bring it all down to um, to the central focus is that most of the people that are overly critical in your life are the people that are not really happy with who they are. Like deep down on the inside, they, they're, they're not happy with where they are in life. They're not happy with what they're doing. They're not happy with, with who they are. And so when they criticize you, it validates them. When they tear you down, they feel better about who they are. That's the only way that they can feel good about themselves is to talk bad about you and to tear you down. Unfortunately, for some of us in the room, some of you, you grew up in a home where you were criticized all the time. And so you, you think it's normal. You, you were raised in a home where you're your parents or whoever raised you or your siblings were incredibly critical. You, no matter what you did, no matter how hard you tried, you could never meet the standard that they had for you. You tried and tried, but you could never seem to quite get just, oh, just, just be good enough. And now you're a grown woman, you're a grown man, you've got kids of your own, and you're still deeply affected by it. It still hurts you to this day. What about those that are in a relationship where marriage is characterized by criticism? 
overly critical, just always at each other, never good enough. You're not this, and you're not that, and you never this, and why don't you do it like my mom did it? Oh, just kidding. Don't ever say that. That is a bad statement. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's at work. Maybe it's at, with your friend group. Maybe, and it's sad too that sometimes Christ followers can be the most critical of other Christ followers. Wow, it's true. I mean, I love the church. The church is God's plan A. I'm a product of the church. But sometimes, if we're not careful in church, we can get so judgmental as followers of Jesus that nobody, oh, you see their relationship with God? Oh, they only showed up to one day at 21 days of prayer and fasting. <laughs> Sometimes the church is the worst when it comes to being overly critical. So how do we deal with it? How do we, in a healthy manner, deal with the criticism that we will undoubtedly face just about every single day of our life for one reason or another? Whether it's because you don't measure up or maybe it's for your faith, how can we deal with it in a healthy manner where it's not something we carry with us forever, but we can learn to, to face it head on and deal with it properly? So let's talk about it. I think the first way that you could deal with it is just punch them in the face. <laughs> that, that, that is one way to deal with it. It's not the right way. And I'm sure... I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lord, if there's anger in me, forgive me. I don't want to talk about the wrong ways to deal with it. I think all of us, if we, we don't even need much time, but we could, we could all list off a ton of the wrong ways to deal with uh, being criticized and how, how we have dealt with it in the past. But what I am more interested in is kind of discovering the right responses to criticism. When somebody criticizes you, what is... What is a healthy way to respond? And understand, and we'll talk about both of them over the next few minutes, but there's, there's healthy criticism and then there's unhealthy criticism, right? Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about both of those. But I think, I think the first right response to criticism is if it is constructive criticism, you have to be willing to listen to it. I can't tell you how many people Ask a question. You've encountered these people. Not, you're not those people, remember. You've encountered them. You, they ask a question and then you give them an answer and they tell you, I've already done that. No, you didn't. I don't believe you. Like, they don't wanna, they don't wanna listen. And I don't know why that is. Like, we get super defensive, I think, a lot of times when we're asking somebody and where somebody has some feedback for us. Let's call it feedback, where it doesn't even sound as dangerous. Like, we don't even want feedback. Like, what? Bro, I'm perfect. Like, that presentation was amazing. I don't care what you say. You stumbled over every single word, man. It was not good. Like, and if your boss can't, constructively give you some criticism, then that's on us. If we can't take constructive criticism, healthy criticism, what it does, it reveals something about our heart. That we have some insecurities where we're trying to portray something that's not true. And so we have to be willing to listen when it's healthy criticism. So how do we know? Here's another question, though, I think, around knowing when to listen, because I think it's hard sometimes. How do I know when to listen to criticism? And there's two things that I'll help you with tonight. I think you have to understand the person's motive. Like, when you feel in that moment that their motive is to help you and not hurt you, then you, you be willing to listen. Now, if they come out guns a-blazing and they're like, da, 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 you just, oh, whoa, slow down. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking if they come to you genuinely with the right heart, like take a deep breath and realize they're not out to get you. 
They're out to help you. They want to see you be everything that you're called to be and be the best version of you that you can. So if their motives are right and they're not attacking you, then I think we need to be willing to listen. And then the second prerequisite to listening is this. And this is, this is huge. That the person that is giving you constructive criticism or feedback can actually help you. Now, don't give somebody constructive criticism if you can't help them. That's just being arrogant. If Pastor Johnson walked up to me and said, hey, hey, Brad, I just, I want to walk you through how you handled this or as you were preaching, I'm all ears. Yes, sir. Why? Because first of all, he's my pastor, but second of all, he's got some street cred. He pastored the same church for 30 plus years, and the congregation still loves him. I mean, come on, like, yeah. I'm in, please. But if my eight-year-old daughter walked up to me and said, Daddy, in my professional opinion, (laughs) sweetheart, go eat Cheetos. Right? Like if they're, if they're actually qualified to help you and they're approaching you with the right heart, then take a step back and say, okay, maybe I do have something to learn here. And maybe this is one of those, those moments when I do need to listen to what they have to say. So we listen. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31 in the New Living Translation says it this way. If you listen to constructive criticism... You will be at home among the wise. Ooh. If you're too good to listen to constructive criticism, you will always be settling for less than what you could be. Always. You've got to have people in your world, listen, that can help you. Don't be, and I'm speaking to me too, don't be so arrogant to think that we know how, that that there's nobody, there's always, they they say this in the sports world all the time, there's always going to be somebody bigger, faster, stronger. Always. And it's true in, in every element of our life. There will be somebody that has more wisdom, more experience, more knowledge, and they really do want to help you better yourself. And so in those moments, we We listen. Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Okay, so here are our first response if it's constructive criticism and they meet the criteria. We're going to listen to what they have to say. We're going to let our defenses kind of, but here's the second one. When people are criticizing us, from time to time, I think there's also the right time to answer their criticism, like to speak up. Hey, well, um, offer, offer a defense for why it is that you were behaving like you were. Offer an answer for what it is they're calling out in you. So when do we answer? When, when, is, the, when is the right time for us as Christians when we're criticized all the time for our beliefs or for how we are, how we're interacting with people or in relationships. What is, what is the, when, when, do we, when do we pipe up and, and actually give an answer? And I think there's a couple of prerequisites here too. I think when, when they're saying something about you or to you and they're missing information about the story, right? Like if they don't have the full picture of what's going on, they walk up. You get out of your car in the, in the church parking lot. They're like, oh, it's another new car, huh? Looks expensive. I don't want to listen to you right now because I don't feel like you have good motives right now, so I'm going to answer you. Hey, sweetheart, let me tell you what just happened. You don't know, but two days ago, I was rear-ended and my car was totaled. And I had to get another car. Oh, (laughs) kind of changes the picture. They didn't know what was going on. There's more to the story. And so in those moments, like, hey, 
There's more information. You're, you're coming at me, but let me tell you the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. There, there's, more, there's more to the story than what you, what you know. And here, here's the other time, the, uh, for me anyways, that I will be willing to pipe up and say something if, if they don't have the whole picture. But here's the other thing. If I believe or actually think that they're open to hearing what I'm going to tell them. Because some people will not be. Some people want to criticize you, and they don't care what you say back. They're going to criticize what you say in return to them. They're, they're, it's going to fall on deaf ears, and they're like, yeah, no, 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 and they'll find something. So if, if they're not going to be open to saying, oh, you know what, okay, well then, no, no, no. You can criticize me all you want, but I'm not, I'm not even going to give you an opinion on what's going on and tell you even more to the story. Let's, let's talk about relationships for a second. What about marriages? Some of you are in a marriage right now that is defined by critical words. And I don't know how else to tell you this, but if you want to have a healthy relationship, you gotta stop. It is not going to lead anywhere productive. Is if all you can say is, why are those towels folded the wrong way? If all you, I'm serious, y'all. If all you can do is find fault with what's going on and you have to voice it, shh. Because it's going to lead you to a place in your marriage. And chances are, your spouse is already there. They may not have said anything, but they are so frustrated. And they're, listen, when somebody's frustrated because they can't ever do anything, right, it leads them down a path that is so unhealthy. If you, if, if you know, I need you to, eval I'm telling you, if you want to have a healthy relationship, evaluate this. Evaluate your criticism to praise ratio. Count it one day, for real. Like, oh, geez, that was a bad, put a tally down. Just count how much you criticize people versus praising them and honoring them. And I think, I think you might be blown away. And then, then work to be more honoring and more uplifting. Find something. Why is it that we're so, it's so easy for us to find something wrong and call that out instead of when we see something right, we're so less apt to actually say, wow, that was amazing. Thank you for what you did. Hey, what about this, really? Like, this is something that, that I'm trying to teach my kids. I don't know how to cook, y'all. I don't know how to cook anything. My idea of cooking is picking something up at a restaurant. But something that I, I'm trying to teach our kids that when Cassidy does cook, we, without question, every one of us will give her a hug and say, hey, thank you for dinner tonight. Thank you for taking time to make food for our family so we can sit around the dinner table and have a family meal. Like, I'm getting so practical. When's the last time you said thank you for something like that? Spouses, if, if one, one of you did the laundry that week, when's the last time you went up and said, hey, thank you for, for folding my underwear? <laughs> and, and we're laughing, and I get it, it's funny, but it's so true. Especially if you've been married for a little while, you, you forget the small things that got you to the place where they actually wanted to marry you. It's the little things. Praise versus criticism. Let's look at the Bible and how this plays out. Judges chapter 8, the story of Gideon. You're familiar with his story, but maybe you haven't seen it from this perspective. There was a group of people that were criticizing Gideon. I mean, just going after him. And he, he would actually answer them. In verse 1 and 2, the Bible says that the Ephraimites asked Gideon, Why have you treated us like this? Watch. And they criticized him. Sharply. And how does he handle this? But he answered them. He gave them a defense. And basically, if you read the rest of the story, he started building them up. And he was encouraging them. He said, listen, I need y'all to stop for just this. I need you to look and see what all you guys have done compared to little old me, Gideon. And the, the, the way the story ends is, is so powerful. He gives them additional information around the story 
In, in verse 3, it says this, when the men of Ephraim heard Gideon's answer, they were no longer angry. Isn't that amazing? Like if there's more to the story that they don't know and you handle this situation where they come at you the right way, like and you handle it godly, now not everybody's going to say, well, wow, you're so right. There's, I told you, there'd be people that just, they're going to argue just to argue. But people that have their head on their shoulders are going to say, wow, okay, you know what? You can diffuse the situation with the way that you handle it so often. You can diffuse a very critical person by the way that you handle it. Or you can light a flame, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like if they come at you and you come right back, blah, 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 blah. it's going to blow up. There's a time when someone cares and when they can actually help that we listen to constructive criticism. There's a time when someone is criticizing you and a piece of information would be helpful, it would change their perspective, then we, we pipe up and we, we answer their criticism. But then the third, and I think this is the most important, and I couldn't come up with a, a couth way to say it. I just, I went back to something that I tell Windsor all the time in sports, and it's this, that we've got to learn how to flush unjust criticism. Amen. That's good. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I, I've told Windsor in sports, and whether it's after a strikeout or a drop pass or an error, whatever, missed basket, like we as human beings have the tendency to allow one incident, one isolated incident to affect the rest of the game. And so somebody says something to you, and now does it, not it doesn't just hang in the moment, but now it's affected the rest of your day, and you get home, and it's affected the way that you deal with your family, and now it's like lingered into the entire work week. And what you have to be really, really, really good at is flushing unjust criticism. You got to just say, you know what? What you're saying right now is not valid. You're so off base that I'm just not, it, it's going to go right here, and it's going to go right out here. Like, I, I, I don't have time to even hear what you're saying right now, because you obviously have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. How do you know? Look at their track record. Look at their track record. This is, this is when you know how to flush unjust criticism. Most people that are overly critical are repeat offenders. It's not their first time. And you can look and you say, oh, uh, it's you again. Okay. <laughs> Adios. Right? You, you know their, their pattern of behavior. If you are in a dating relationship, listen, red flag. If you're in a dating relationship and all they do is talk bad about people in your peer group, yeah. red flag, you are next. We flush unjust criticism. And here's why. Because a lot of times, this is, this is where I kind of wanted to go today, and I want you to, to catch this, is that the one who is doing the criticizing is oftentimes emotionally unhealthy or they're wounded and they're hurt. And you may not see it. You may not even know it. But you need to know deep down that if they're coming at you in such an unjust manner, that there's something on the inside of them that is not right. I'm not saying it validates what they're saying. It doesn't validate what they're, what they're doing or how they're doing it. But I want you to know that oftentimes they're wounded. And the old saying, hurt people hurt people. Maybe they're hurting financially. Maybe their body's changing. Maybe their kids are acting out and they're stressed out and they're frustrated. Oftentimes... Oftentimes, their criticism of you is not personal. Now, that's hard. That's hard to take in. And it's hard to remember that in the moment. But we've got to be good as Christians. You have to be good as a follower of Jesus. Of saying, man, you are so off base. 
I've got so much more and so much more important things to handle today that I don't even have time to, to give this one ounce of thought. Like I don't even have the energy to deal with this right now because I've got so many more mountains that I'm climbing right now. God's taking me to so many more places. He's opening so many doors that I don't even have the bandwidth to deal with your nonsense right now. I gotta wrap this up, but uh, let me just throw this leadership lesson at you. The more effective you become in whatever it is that you do, you will always be a bigger target for criticism. The more effective you are at work, you got the raise, you got the promotion, you also got the bullseye on your back. Your marriage is blessed, People with unhealthy marriages, why are y'all go on a date night every week? Because <laughs> I love my wife. Like, you're, you're a target. I'm just telling you, the more, the, the more effective you are in whatever it is that you're doing, you better be ready for criticism because you have a target on your back. If your, influences, if your influence rises become a greater target for criticism. And if we don't learn how to deal with it, it will take you down. It will weigh on your heart and on your mind. I love the old sermon illustration that I've, I've heard for years. Pastor Johnson, I think, was the first that I heard it from, and I'm gonna tell it again tonight. You've probably heard it a thousand times, but there was... A farmer, again, this is a story, this is not true. Animal cruelty, it's not true, this is not real. <laughs> there was a farmer whose donkey fell in a well. And it was a deep well, and the farmer had no way of getting it out. And so he said, I don't even know, I don't know how to put this donkey out of its misery. So he came up with the idea, again, this is not true. He said, I'm just going to get the neighbors, and we're just going to... We're going to get our shovels out, and we're just going to just throw a bunch of dirt in there and fill this thing up, put him out of his misery. So they did. The town came around. They were digging, throwing dirt in. They did this for about an hour. The farmer kept looking down. A little while, he noticed, like, the, the donkey was making some noise at the beginning, but now he's quiet, and what's happening? He looks over. Donkey. Donkey figured out what to do. The dirt would hit his back. He'd shake it off. He'd step up on top of it. Shake it off. Step up on top of it until the donkey eventually climbed out. <laughs> you got to learn how to flush unjust criticism. You got to be really, really good at learning how to allow things to go in one ear and out the other. But we also, there's, there's a balance of grace and truth. You also have to learn that if there is some validation to what they're saying, and they're coming at you and approaching you the right way, that there is a time to listen. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in, to help quicken you and say, listen, I need, Brad, check yourself right now. They're trying to help me. I can be better. Will you be willing to listen? Would you stand with me all across the room today? I think there's little things that as, as followers of Jesus that we've got to become good at. And this is one of them. This is a seemingly very small thing, but it's so big because it's all in how you relate with people. And if you can learn to handle hard situations like this in the right godly way, you wanna talk about your witness increasing in the workplace? You wanna talk about people saying, whoa, I just saw how they came at her and wow, I need to learn how to do that. I need to learn how to handle myself in the right godly way. Man, what a powerful, powerful service. My prayer and my hope is that it changed your life. I know God was moving and he was speaking to you through it. Hey, on behalf of our pastoral team and our leadership team, 
We just want to thank you again for worshiping with us this morning at Christian Life Austin Online. We pray that this service remains in your heart and helps lead you to your next steps on your faith journey. And we want to take a moment right now to give you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus if you've never made that decision before in your life. Whether you're in your living room right now or you're traveling, I know that Jesus will meet you wherever you are. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you want salvation today, it is that simple. All you have to do is say with your tongue that Jesus Christ is Lord and also believe in your heart, truly believe that God raised him from the dead. Let's take a moment and let's pray together. I'm gonna pray a prayer and maybe you wanna pray a very similar prayer to what I'm gonna pray, but let's pray together right now. God, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the gift of salvation given through Jesus. We believe that Jesus is Lord and we also believe that you, God, you raised Jesus from the dead. And God, we receive and we accept your salvation. We thank you for all you do for us. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Wow. Well, congratulations to everyone who made that decision. I'm so proud of you. And I want you to know that all of heaven is celebrating with you right now in this very moment. And we at Christian Life Austin are also celebrating with you as well. But hey, we know that this is only step one on the journey. We want you to know that you are not alone and we don't even expect for you to figure this whole thing out on your own. We wanna partner with you as we walk through our core values. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference in the lives of others. We would love to help you take your next step. Whether it's water baptism, joining a life group, or getting plugged in and serving through Growth Track, we have everything you need to make this process easy. And we wanna walk alongside you as you take your next step. We want you to know that you're valued here at Christian Life Austin, and you're valued in the kingdom of heaven. Hey, we wanna know what your next step is. And we wanna know if you made the decision to follow Jesus today. So please click the link in the description so we can get connected with you. Again, thank you so much for worshiping with us here today at Christian Life Austin. And we can't wait to see you soon.